is this abomination. Hello, armed with a little bit of knowledge, can I make myself a figure of eight dynamic microphone? I've put a 600 ohm headphone driver into this microphone and a nitric one-to-one -one transformer. This is a figure of eight microphone, so you get a null to the side, kind of like a bare dynamic M380. Every time I post a drum video, or like a comparison thing, someone will go, AKG D112, off, or something along those lines. And um, I, I sort of thought about it, and I thought, well, maybe I need to buy an another kick drum microphone. But then I thought, well, what kick drum microphones do I like? My favorites are always like the AKG D series, like the D12, the D20, the D25, and the D30. I haven't got the budget for a D30 and I haven't got the budget for an M380. But then I thought, well, could I make my own? Uh, this is a Nitric one-to-one -one transformer that I believe is intended for microphones. We'll give it a go. I'm probably doing something wrong, aren't I? The internet's gonna tell me. So, here we go, there's this abomination. So this is a pressure gradient microphone. So if we have equal pressure, both in positive and negative phase, we get a figure of eight. Here's how this microphone sounds. Uh, this is it on axis. And then as we turn to the sides, we should see some kind of null happening. And then if we go around the back of the mic, it should be kind of similar. So yeah, it looks a bit crazy at the minute. So I've made and modified lots of microphones previously and one of the uh, things that I used to do is take broken headphones and take out the, the drivers and then just attach them to an XLR and you get like a really kind of cool like little lo-fi mic, um, which I really like. I know that the Bayer M380 had headphone drivers in it and I thought, well, could I do a bit of research, find out what these were and see if I could get some. So I got some 600 ohm headphone drivers, which I believe is the same ohmage that was used in the Bayer M380. And I bought a nitric balancing transform. So I wanna do a little AB test. And I've put a D112 next to it. Now it's gonna be a very different microphone. Let's just listen to soloed kick drum, as ridiculous as that is. So there's no effects on anything. So you'll notice that there's a lot of like 125 happening. That's a D D112. So there's a little bit more scooping happening there. This microphone sounds a lot flatter, but I really struggle with this tricks and bass drum, to be honest. And I kind of think I need to do a bit more of a playing around with it. I might remove the internal mufflers. It's got like this really elaborate internal muffling system, but I think it just kills the drum. And also, as you'll hear in a bit, it's, a, it's rattly. And my primary reason for getting this kit is to sample, but it has to be right before I go and do it because it's. Um, I'm going to go and record it in a very special studio, and uh, it's got to be really quick because I've got I've got to get it done in like eight hours, eight to ten hours. Long story, we'll keep you updated. So I'm doing all of this work beforehand as like pre-production. <laughs> it's ridiculous, isn't it? Um, the D112 and, and the I've called it the M8 microphone or the Mate microphone, Magitone Eight microphone. Not a million miles away though, really. If we listen to the binaural head, 
you can hear a bit of that, that low end develop. I put some EQ on and you can bring out that low frequency stuff that we can hear in the, in the binaural head. Alright, so let's have a little listen to a, a mix with it, shall we? So what we've got going on there, I've got a bit of fab filter, not doing a massive amount of EQ, uh, just sort of a little bit of a mid scoop, which I always tend to sort of pull out like 350 anyway on drums. And then um, Lindell API thingy my Bobby. Again, just adding like 50, a little bit of 50, which I almost always do anyway. And remove the front head. So one of the things you can hear in there is the rattling. All of this like mechanism is rattling. Right, stop. We've got, we got a rattle. We're going to have to dismantle the whole fucking kit. That's the D112. And as I've said before on other videos, I don't like the D112 inside the drum. You get this weird like kind of thing happening because of the nature of the cardioid microphone being inside a drum. I just think it sounds weird. And I never managed to get rid of that with EQ. So it doesn't have that weird like low mid stuff. And then I can add a bit of low end and it sounds really natural. It's not got quite as much rejection as I would have liked. So that's the same plugins. just a bit sort of punchier. I did all of that with the Trixon and the intention is really to use the Trixon, but then I thought I should try it with a different drum as well. You hear that like beach ball-y like bang bang. The low frequency of the hand clap is colliding in this reflective shower and you get a high pitch boing where the lower, longer waveforms are bumping into each other. And that's what we're getting inside a drum. Just easier to demonstrate in a shower. Notice how that isn't there in the figure of eight. 
It wasn't totally what I'd hoped for. I was kind of hoping it was going to be a bit sort of like I wouldn't have to EQ it. When I did the voice test, it sounded really great. There was loads of low end. And then I took it to Dramatic. It sounded good in the room when I listened on the headphones. When I got it home, I don't know. It just didn't seem like there was a lot of low end. And I was sort of like a bit bummed out by this. And then I thought, is there something to do with impedance? Sort of shifting the focus of the microphone. Perhaps. I don't know. Maybe. Part of me wonders a few things. One, how much is this affecting the directionality? Have I wired the transformer up in the correct way? I need to go back and do some more tests. Yeah, there's a lot more to be done. But it's kind of fun, isn't it? That's all for now.